Welcome to the new show, US and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. That's, a, that's an old song or a new song? That's an old song. It's a good song, though. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Also joining us today is Totera. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. <laughs> Why do people... Well, it's not really Halloween. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? It's not even Christmas too. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know some people though. They're still talking about how they're excited for Halloween, even though we're not even close to it. <laughs> how are we gonna trick or treat with social distancing? You just put all the candy on a pole, please, and we'll we'll get to it. <laughs> no, you... yeah, but then someone could just easily take the whole bag or the bowl or whatever it is. You develop a witch system to lower the bag down and then raise it out of reach once again. But Silver, <laughs> didn't you guys? recently had Easter and that involves giving out candy? Well that one it's 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 eggs. You're on the egg hunt, but it doesn't really involve giving out candy. True, true. And I- I'm guessing that this year's Halloween, if the whole COVID nineteen thing still is going on, uh, people are forced to give out wrapped candies instead of loose ones. So there's going to be mini sneakers, mini Mars, mini so on, and so on and so on. Ooh, M&Ms, that's going to be fun. But anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic book, issue number 71. In this issue, Twilight Sparkles, School of Friendship student, experience Nightmare Night in Ponyville for the first time. Yay! So, gonna be straight out honest with you guys. The comic was published on October 3rd, 2018. And we didn't really got the time nor... Well, let's just say that we goof on timing. I I don't know if it's a goof. I mean, eh, it just is what it is. Mm. Don't beat yourself up is what I'm saying. Uh, True, 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 true. But I just have to say that timing aside, we, we had a lot of other things that we need to deal with. And with the pandemic that's going on, it's scary, right? So it fits. Kind of. It is, we dream of a bygone age where we could go outside. Yes, where everything can hurt you. <laughs> so there's no I difference, right? Treating it like an apocalypse. Well, that's why I keep saying we'll get reverse zombies. They they want to keep the social distancing, so they lurch away from you. Ah, <laughs> ah, six feet, six feet. <laughs> but anywho, anywho. <clears throat> um, before we start the review, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, it's fun to see the student six in the comics. There, though, this I think was only a taste before we got feats of friendship, which was an even better showing. It is done by my favorite IDW artist, Andy Price, or perhaps I should just say favorite comic artist. He does lots of stuff. At the same time, it ties into a critique that has had has permeated all of the uh, student stories. The Main six are not good teachers. In fact, it seems like to show the student six being their best, the t- main six have to be at their worst. And after a while, you just get tired of that. You're like, why are these characters teachers if they keep screwing up this badly? That has been a motive for the students. But anywho, Tara, what do you think? I really like this comment. I mean, I would say it's bad because pretty much what Silver said, it's like the student six are the smart ones here and the teachers i mean the teachers the main six they've been through so much stuff and yet somehow here they just mess up and i don't know how they could do that but they have a good lesson in the end which makes up for it and as we scroll through the pages uh you they have like a lot of hit little hidden easter eggs and they got stuff hit uh, around the borders of the comics and it was a very enjoyable one yep, yep i agree i agree and well as for me I enjoy this comic. Um, it's a one shot, by the way, so that's a lot of fun. And when while rereading this and looking at the team, it just hit me that oh god, we should have done this in Halloween, but we missed the chance. So, yep, <laughs> Corona time, whatever it is. But you know, honestly, I do like the comic. The lesson here is awesome too, and the art by Andy Price, magnifico. So yay, nothing more to add. Anywho, uh, if you guys have not read this comic yet, go check it out. It is a lot of fun. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us and let's dive right into it. So, 
We start off the comic with the student six getting ready for Nightmare Nights in Ponyville. And they're waiting up on Silverstream. And Silverstream pops in and couldn't decide what to wear, so she wore everything. That is a concept that is pretty cool. So let, let's break down. She is an astronaut, bat man, mummy, skeleton, vampire thingy. I don't know. Probably. Which Batman doesn't need to wear a space suit. Because he's Batman! <laughs> but anywho, uh, once Silverstream comes in and they head out for Halloween and they are greeted to some awesome sights in Ponyville. And I'm going to pause here. I know we're just two pages in, but I just have to pause here and guys... Uh, if you see something pointed out, because I see the Three Stooges here, I see Kevin and Hobbs, I see Elvis Presley, and I got no idea who Luna's being. So, to me, this is just awesome. What do you guys think? Let's see here. Well, they have uh, Captain America at the candy store uh, stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I'm just doing a search. Luna's shirt says Runaway. Yeah. Got any idea who? So... The, well, prop maybe the Runaways. No, that's an all female band. But Luna's female. It, she is, but that, but for some reason, I get the feeling that she's referencing a male rock star. Mm. Maybe someone from Kiss. I'm not sure. I will have to double check. But, but the reference is quite wonderful. Yeah, a lot of references. Even the Charlie Brown Halloween special with the witch mask. And of course, we were just last podcast talking about Trixie and Sunset and Starlight, and now all three are together. Yeah, and the witch calling them idiots. <laughs> After she's the one who made such a mess of the last time. Oh, yeah, yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that the Doctor Who phone booth behind them? Wait, really? I mean, it looks like, kind of looks like it to me. Which but one? But it's just Where? more scary looking behind oh. Trixie and Sunset. Nah, it's, it's not that. Hmm. Almost looks like it. Yeah. And also we see our Alicia's dressing as Batman. The Adam West version. I feel Let's like we're here. playing uh, Find uh, Where's Waldo. I know. This is fun. This is, Oh, we also see our Alicia's, no, um, Tiberius dressing up as, I'm gonna say Elton John. <laughs> yep. So this is a lot of fun. Yay. <laughs> and it continues as this is a two-page spread. I mean, Daring Dew is actually getting scared by a mummy. Cadence is a witch. Oh, yeah. And you got Jack Skellington on the statue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although, I wonder who's dressed up as Optimus Prime. Oh, that's Dr. Who. Duct tape. I'm yeah, most likely. Yeah, I'm just guessing. Well, they better be careful, though, because they're on Elm Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although, maybe the maybe the funniest part is Lyra's Princess Leia costume with an actual donut. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Leia? Really? <laughs> Well, yes, uh, yeah, I think it is because it's Star Trek theme. Well, it's sci-fi themed because of Bon Bon Star Trek outfit. Mm. And then it's like, why does she have a donut? Oh, I get it now. Maybe it should have been a cinnamon bun. Yeah, but you know, uh, I, I see Miss Opportunity for Lyra to be wearing Star Trek because if she was Star Trek, she would be a green female character in a Star Trek movie. <laughs> Oh, I think I just figured it out. Aluna is meant to be Bon Jovi. Oh, really? No. Oh, that kind of makes sense. Uh, okay, okay, okay. He's got the hair for it. <laughs> and he's got the leather jacket. And one of his albums was called Runaway. Uh -huh. Ha! I cracked the code! Yay! <laughs> and also at the same time, too, uh, like Tara mentioned the borders. The, the borders are fun. This is rare. But um, the bottom panel, we get to see what? Eat at Joe's. And the other one's saying Andy Price. <laughs> and I think what? That's a Andy Price spider? Most like. Let's see here. Du -du -du. Wait, I don't yet see the Andy Price spider. Yeah, where's the Andy Price spider? It's on the second... Oh, on, it's... I see it. Yeah, it's on the second spread. It's where the shattery figure comes in and talks to Gallus. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, but anywho, okay. Uh, let's carry on, let's carry on. We, well, I just so, want to point out one more thing. Uh, mm. I'm probably going to feel silly for this, but when I first saw Cadence in the witch outfit, I'm not going to lie, I thought that was Mary Sue. 
I get the best costume ever. Well, is that amazing? Well, technically, Tara, there's no difference between Cadence and Mary Sue. <laughs> oh, Norman. Harsh is the norm. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, hey, are you sure you want to say that? <laughs> uh, sick burn, sick burn. <laughs> Anywho, uh, carrying on. So the ponies, or the students, are very excited to be in this scenario here. Uh, Yona just mentions there's a lot of uh, candy costumes, tricks, and games. Vincent here just says, oh, yes, uh, this we as, us ponies can really throw a party if we really want to. Yay. And Smolder just comments about Ocellus being a changeling and feels like, hey, this is like home, right? You, you wear costumes and whatnot. And Ocellus just transforms into a clown. Oh, God, she's scary. Clown! Clown! <laughs> she is scary. But eh, Very scary. But anywho, uh, Gallus is assaulted, not really assaulted, but surprised by a shadowy figure and points out that there's a adventure waiting for them at the house of the no castle of the two sisters so you might want to go there and have fun Ooh. so Gallus just says yeah we'll try and go there we'll try and go there and Ocellus just goes up to Gallus asking who was that strange pony and Gallus, being the snark that he is, says that, oh yeah, that's just principal, uh, principal, mm, principal? How does she, that was principal Twilight. Wow. There's a distance, sorry, there's a difference between the comic and episode where uh, in the show, they call Twilight Hitmare Twilight and over here, she just called principal Twilight. Really throwing me off. <laughs> I know, it's it's the principal, dang it. Ah! <laughs> well, anyway, um, again, let's just say it was just Hitmare Twilight um, asking us just to go to the castle for some secret friendship lesson. So they go to the castle of the two sisters. And when they go, they reminisce about the place, how they haven't been here in a long time. And probably it's just some silly tricks. And when Gallus opened the door, he's assaulted by a scary figure wearing a cloak and oh god no uh it scares the bejesus out of him and just to point out the border on the comic it shows a snake gobbling up fluttershy and fluttershy is liking it oh god no mm. oh no there's deviants of this oh no <laughs> oh god andy why did you do this now you're giving <sighs> The Vore enthusiasts will hear of this. I know. Ah, yes. I know. Anywho, um, <clears throat> after picking himself up, Gallus just... They all go into the castle and sees, oh, wow, the place is decorated nicely. And Smolder just says, ah, yeah, this is going to be goofy, ain't it? Like, uh, ponies are goofy at nature. Sorry, goofy in nature. And somehow she stumbles upon a tripwire activating... A boulder which rolls down the hall, almost crushing them. Oh no! And that's very dangerous. And on the border for this one, we get to see we we know now dressing as peanuts. No, Snoopy. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, Snoopy. <laughs> the Red Baron. Yeah. So that was something where big giant boulder tried to destroy the students. And uh, Sandbar just says that this is not normal. This is not normal. I, I think we um, should probably leave. And Gallus just says that they're not up for this. And Yona is the one saying that, ah, oh, come on, this is fun. We, we should just stay and just experience the madness. While that is happening, we see the shadowy pony figure go back to the school. And it was... Twilight in disguise, ah, oh, telling you thought it was a hunchback, but it was me, Twilight. Yeah. I just keep referencing that meme. I don't know why. Because that meme is <laughs> awesome. Anything involving Dio is just awesome. But anywho, um, Twilight just says, "Okay, the students are at the castle of the sisters, going to learn some exciting stuff," and Twilight just tells 
uh, Pinkie Pie, uh, did you do the decorations for the Castle of the Two Sisters? And what did I mention before? Twilight or Pinkie Pie? Oh, well, Twilight just asked Pinkie, did she decorate the castle? And Pinkie says yes, or got to note to decorate the castle. And here is where the chaos is going to happen because Twilight put up a note asking Pinkie Pie to decorate the castle but there's no specific pony asked to do anything so Rainbow Dash thought that it was her job to decorate the castle but no uh, it was Fluttershy so let's just say that all of the teachers decorated the place with their own flair of madness uh, Pinkie Pie just put a lot of tricks and treats Rainbow Dash do a lot of obstacle course. Fluttershy just put in animals in there, while Rarity put decorate the place with uh, the del delicate silk drapes. And Applejack put up some apple scented candles. And this year is a bad time waiting to happen. And with that, everybody realized that. There's a lot of danger going on there. We probably should go check on the students. You know what? Let's do so now. So I'm going to pause here. So guys, what do you think? This is what I mean when I say that for the main, for the student six to show their best, the main six seem to have to be at their worst. And that's not a great dynamic. They're students. What's wrong with one of the main six giving them a pep talk or helping them step aside as an aside for just a little bit. They don't have to steal the spotlight back. They just have to make a positive contribution. And that's not happening here because they've just put their students in physical danger, but with a lack of communication. Although I think Smolder of all is, uh, is wisening up to this reality because she says, uh, we've been through worse trouble than this, right? Gallus replies, have we? Well, if we haven't, then we will eventually. <laughs> unspoken. Because our teachers are just dumb like that. <laughs> oh. So, here's the fun. Here's the weird thing. This is a visually fun comic. It's got a lot of great... It's got Andy Price's flair for expressions and background references. Nightmare Night is always a great visual treat. But it's all based on the main six incompetence. And that doesn't work for me. All right, understandable, understandable. And Tara, what about you? I really, I, I just like this. So, like, I like how they pretty much, like, so, uh, I can't even talk. Basically, so we took the words right out of my mouth. Because <laughs> it's like, the main, the students are, like, going through all this just fine. Like, yeah, they're trying to survive, obviously, but... They're looking at us in the bright way and how Smolder says we've been through worse than this, right? And I know there's that thing where it's like, the, I know there's some shows and some movies where the teachers learn from the students. It's like, oh, I didn't know this and that, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, though, with miscommunication and whatnot, it's like, wait, we didn't go through this and stuff? It's like, well, you're the freaking teachers and now you're putting your students in danger. You're basically asking for a lawsuit here. <laughs> And to add salt to the injury, uh, those students are representative of other nations. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if, if they all, uh, quote-unquote, pass away, they're just going to start a war because the teachers put their students in danger. And then it's like, you did this to my child. We are now starting a war with you. Uh, to be honest, they're, they're going to lose. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean... It's not. It's not that they don't have a, a hippogriff or a giant Pokemon on their side. Oh yeah, true that. True that. But anywho, uh, carrying but, on. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say to you that I like that. Um, throughout the 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 pages again, there's the borders. Like we see the bat pony being in love with a normal bat, and then you got um the one where it's like where Twilight's like none of that should be there and then you see the at the bottom right where Rainbow Dash is like who is she dressed as and Flush are like not sure but it does ring a bell it's like ha huh, I get it <laughs> I, I got that reference <laughs> good job Captain America but anywho I'm gonna move on so we join back well, sorry 
Uh, can I just point out that maybe the cruelest little side gag is Luna whistling her way probably to the bathroom as she unravels a mummy's uh, bandages behind her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I know toilet paper is in high demand right now, but there are limits. Oh, oh my. Yeah. But there's the panel where, or oh, the border where uh, Applejack is looking at a, under the costume of a pony and she finds nothing. So that's a good one. Well, too. I mean, it is Halloween. Yeah, true, 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 true. <clears throat> so anyway, carrying on. We join back with the students as they explore the place and being scared of their wits because, well, the place almost tried to kill them. So they stumble across, they stumble upon a room and check it out and it's full of cute fuzzy animals having snacks and whatnot. And we get to see a snake almost bloated with something. Let's just say that they are having a lot of fun. So they just hang out for a bit, thinking of the lesson that they're going to learn. And Ocellus activates a trap and oh no some guillotine swinging guillotine comes dropping from the ceiling almost killing everyone the animals panic and well one of the guillotines caught a what you call this drape and the candle lit on fire let's just say that it ain't a good time so there's a lot of fire everybody's in a panic and Yona got bumped by some animals and it dropped some spiders. Ooh, spiders! And there's burning spiders everywhere now. And <laughs> let's just say that this is terrifying. This is crazy. And Yona gets angry. Or, this is how do I put this? This is terrifying for everyone. And Smolder just says, uh, this is getting really scary, guys. What do we do? Yona replies, you feel fear? Then use it. And she just tells everyone that. Silva, do you want to read the line? Yes, you feel fear? Then use it. Fear is energy. Fear is encouragement. Yaks feel fear, but fear not your enemy. Fear make you want to move, make you want to do. Trick is to not let fear freeze you. Don't deny fear. Let fear give you strength. Strength to escape and defeat what you fear. Come on, friends. Don't give in to fear. Use your fear. Yes. Use the fear. Welcome to the dark side. No, Norman, what did I say? Cookies. But I'm going to pause here um, because I, I, I think this is a good pause point before we hit into more action. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, I do like how the main six, um, main six, the student six, uh, because in the first comic, uh, the first thing you see, oh my god, what's gonna happen? And I just noticed right now that there's a pumpkin behind them. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. <laughs> but then after it's like, oh, they're just all gathering around. But then once uh, Ocellus presses the button, they have pendulums swinging around. It's like, why, why, why would you get that for your students? I mean, it's probably not going to hit them, but with the drapes and then it sets the fire, everything panics. And then, you know, it reminds me of the um, the one episode, Castle Sweet Castle, where <laughs> once one thing happens, all of these, these chain reactions just start happening. Like, all these bad things start happening. But I, as all this is happening, I, I, so, I still love what happens in the background, like with the one pony on the painting. He's looking up. He's like, oh, my picture frame is on fire. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. And I and this one Easter egg, which I know Silver will be proud of me for knowing this, with uh, Fluttershy wearing the shirt that says Bella. I'm probably gonna butcher this name by the way, but it says Bella Lugosi or Lugosi, where Yona's talking about uh, uh, feel f feeling fear and stuff like that. Do you know what that reference is, Norman? Yeah, it's one of the vampires. Uh, I think the or yes is the guy who played as Dracula in the um, oh I forget the name but it was the guy who played as Count Dracula in the nineteen um thirties I think so silver well well done well done Torterra did I pass you 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 have pleased your your ancestors Blue Bulbasaur <laughs> oh my. <laughs> 
Oh, that's going to haunt me forever. We're talking about Halloween. Yep. <laughs> what? Well, we're coming up with your costume. <laughs> oh, so my costume's a Bulbasaur then. Blue ball so. <laughs> I don't know if uh, it'll fit my size. Oh, trust me. These can be massive blue balls. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. But before, before I end, I like how Yona is like, oh, you feel fear? And it's like, fear is not your enemy. Fear is helping you do this and that. It's like, you know what? That's actually a pretty good lesson. Because usually when people hear fear, they think of, you know, oh, you got to run away, be scared. You know, it's like, no, you don't always have to do that. You can use it as strength and defeat your enemies with it. <laughs> True. Isn't that the mantra of the yellow lantern? I think well, so. Mantra for fear is that uh, they yellow lanterns are all about fear. Hmm. Wait, didn't Batman become a yellow lantern before? He was t briefly t chosen. F yes, because he struck fear to his enemies and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Anywho, uh, thank you, Terra. Silver, what do you think? Well, if you want to know the the Sinestro Corps mantra, in blackest day, in brightest night. Beware your fears made into light. Let those who try to stop what's right burn like my power, Sinestro's might. Wow. Ain't he egotistic? Yeah. Well, speaking of egotists, Rainbow Dash. What were you thinking? Because <laughs> from the artwork, I, I think I can safely say there is an edge to those guillotines. Guillotines. Uh, what is she thinking? Hey. This is madness. You gotta kill us all. Um, I, I do find it kind of funny that Smolder is afraid of the situation. She's like, "What? Everything's on fire. I go swimming through magma." Yeah, but in the current situation that she is in now, she's not thinking too straight. And yeah, yeah. And then there's Jonas pep talk, which is well done and a good message. I, I mean, there is the Paul Atreides. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> fear is the little death that brings total oblivion. I will allow my fear to pass through me and out of me. <laughs> I could do. I'm suddenly realizing how many how many mantras we have about uh, fear. <laughs> True that. But here's the, here's another curious thing. Mm -hmm. Yona has really become the prominent student in both the show and the comics. The real standout. Now, some ways I'm glad because it's nice to have a yak that's a positive influence. Goodness knows Rutherford <laughs> did enough damage on his own. But I almost feel like now I'm I'm actually a little Yona out. I need to see the other students stepping up and, and being maybe the voice of reason or the or the guiding light for a change. Give Yona a little breather. And I don't know if we'll get that. Yeah, probably in the future. Season 10, maybe. Uh, but... Uh, anything more to add, Silver? Uh, let's see here. Basically, when they get out, there should be a lawyer present to have them either sign a waiver <laughs> or press a lawsuit, whichever side he wants to be oh, on. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Anywho, going to carry on. So, the current situation right now is bad, where everything's on fire and they need to escape. So, with that pep talk from Yona, Yona directs everyone to do things she as she directs smolder to put out the fire because she's immune to fire and with the what you call this burning spiders uh, silver stream flies up and snaps them away like uh, swats them out with the fire put out the door is stuck and she can't break down the door. So it's up to Yona and Sandbar to smash the door. And I'm looking at this and thinking that, oh, wow, there's some kind of feeling going to be happening soon enough. Ooh. Well, the couple that smashes together. Okay, I won't finish that sentence. <laughs> Hulk smash? Hmm. But anywho, so... Once the door is open, uh, they need to find a way to get the animals out of there. And yeah, they, they seem to uh, they seem to scared to get out. And Ocellus here thinks of a plan. And once she found it, she transformed into... Ah, uh, God. Uh, Sweetie Bot, please help me on this one. 
She's a... That's not a word. T-Rex. <laughs> With Fluttershy's cutie mark. I know. A, ret a return from the Discord takes them through time arc. Yep. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's from Reflections, where Celestian Star Swirl went into an alternate universe and there was a Flutter Rex yeah. waiting for them. Uh, yeah. Um, in all honesty, this irks me a bit because why Fluttershy? Why not a just proper dinosaur or T Rex? But, eh. I don't know. I just because love how they portrayed it in this piece where it's literally in the exact pose and with the banner referencing Jurassic Park. <laughs> Holy bleeping bleep, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas, what the uh, fudge. <laughs> well done. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so anywho, with that, all the animals ran out of their, like, their life matters, like before Disney doesn't. But anywho, with that, uh, they all ran out of the castle and, well, they just are scared by some other traps and just break through and they all crash out of the main door where the main six are there to, well, quote-unquote save the day, but eh. They were too late, but the students got out of there alive. And Twilight just asks, are you guys okay? We're sorry that we terrified you. And Gallus being nonchalantly just says, uh, I'm scared of Pashwa. And the rest of the students look at him wanting to kill him. Just, yeah, wanting to kill him. And Gallus just says, oh, we're okay. Just a little scared. Nothing to be afraid about. With that, Twilight just says, uh, it's awesome that you guys uh, overcome your fear. And yeah, we'll overcome your fear. Osiris just says, mm, we didn't really overcome our fear exactly. Um, it moved us and whatnot. Like it was our motivator. With that, Twilight just says, okay, next year we're going to make a better housewarming trip. Uh, well, 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 what is their holiday? My god, I forgot. Night yeah. Nightmare Nights. Nights. A better Nightmare Nights where he won't kill you this time around. And Silverstream says, Are you kidding? That was great. Can we do it again tomorrow? I think we need to put Silverstream in the same category as Cadence as Adrenaline Junkie. Quite possible. Yeah. yeah. And with that, the comic ends. So Silver, what do you have to say? Final thoughts. I think Queen Chrysalis would be so proud of Ocellus, and yet at the same time, personally offended. For there's that trap scene where a chrysalis head on a spring pops out of the ground, and it is Ocellus with the most frightening, feral expression that punches her in the face saying, take that creepy monstrosity. <laughs> so there's a bit of the old changeling ferocity, which they, which they were known for, and but it's directed at their queen, which I've got to think is cathartic for Ocellus in so many ways. True. I, I guess you just need the right push to get her feral. So Chris is like, I'm so proud I'll kill you last. <laughs> I feel like I've said everything I can say about this. It's fun, visually interesting, but at the same time, there's that undercurrent of the main six not living up to their roles as teachers. And Honestly, I feel like we saw that more than we saw them fulfilling it. And it becomes a frustration after a while. It's unfortunate, but true. Understandable, understandable. But at the same time, too, I feel like this comic here is the first time that we're seeing the students, right? In the comic, it was the debut for mm. them. Yeah, because it's my, it's my first time seeing them in a comic. Yeah. But still, it's one of those scenarios where... Uh, this is their first time, their first, what you might call this, uh, debut. So, a lot of leeway are given. But I'm going to save my thoughts for, well, when I, it's up to me. And, Tara, what do you have to say? Well, yeah, that's pretty, pretty much what I said with my first impressions. I really like this comic. It has a lot of great funny moments. My one favorite moment was with the Jurassic Park reference. Especially with, with the Fluttershy Cutie Mike. And I like how... 
pretty much what Silver said with Ocellus punching the fake Chrysalis in the face. It's like, take that, you monstrosity. Like, like I said, it's a, a lot of great moments. And even with the pictures in the background, like even at the end of the comic, we see Celestia wanting to go to Christmas Town. It's like, we're not even in Christmas yet. Isn't that a reference to another movie? Yes, Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, okay. This is Hana V. This is Nightmare Nights. Da 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 da. Oh look, the Sora. Sora. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. The King of King of Hearts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anything more to add, Tara? No, that's pretty much right. it. And as for me, I it's been a while since I read the comics, and it was a nice uh, comeback to read, especially. Uh, coming back to Andy Price's art and there is um, I, I feel like a broken record when I say this but his art is just awesome there's a lot of reference to pop culture and this year I bet this drawing this comic is a dream come true for him because if you guys don't know Andy Price here is a big fan of um, classic monster movies uh, especially from the early, early thirties or early fifties, Silva. Uh, I'm not sure myself. I think early fifties. Yeah. So he is a big fan of uh, that era of monster movies. You can check it out on his Deviant Art or Instagram. It's there. You can see his inspiration, and it shows true here because he, all of the monsters that he drew, even uh, Sandbar's vampire look is based on Bella Bella I cannot say word Bella Golosi <laughs> yeah Bella Golosi so yeah but besides that I do like the motivational speech from Yona and the expression that he drew for Yona was oh this is just too good just too good and yeah ov overall this is a fun read this is a fun read and with these main six, the teachers, um, hmm, it's true what you said, Silver. They're just um, incompetent, yeah. to put it precisely. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And this, I, I, I even can't, what you call this, defend them on this one, like they didn't, they, they all read the note, so that's good, and they all put up their themes for the castle but you know honestly i i have to put all the blame on rainbow dash on this one because if you think about it without the obstacle course it will just be a walk through the castle and it'll be a nice walk would you agree guys maybe a little startling in places but yes yeah yeah so in, in all honesty it, fun read and i can't wait to see what we get for next comic anyway um my final thoughts on this one catch go go read it check it out if possible and go read it so silver what are we going to well uh, um, this is not fair because i haven't really told the guys what we're going to do for next week so next week probably is going to be something special that we haven't done before depending on certain situations and you know honestly when this comic when this review comes out we probably missed it but uh if things are going as planned or if things go as planned we might be doing the final for season nine live on stream and stuff Ooh. so that's something different so if this comes out before that, go check the VOD for um, what you call this for rewind and stuff. I I'm sure I'll put it up on the channel soonish. And I think what uh, if this goes through, uh, you'll be doing it on live on your channel, Silver. Yes, if we can get everything copacetti, we shall we shall stream on our channel, it, and it will be good and fun. And Yay! Gay. So. Uh, join us there and stuff. I, I have to speak in the past tense because this is oh man, this is so confusing. This is scary. Oh no. <laughs> but anywho, um, 
with that, uh, I guess we should wrap things up. So anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theemissiongmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me at a multitude of places. You can find me on DeviantArt and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me on the YouTubes. Do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact and I Shall Appear. You'll find me on Fridays uh, on both YouTube and Twitch streaming art projects along with guest stars and hosts. And you can find me on Equestria Daily on Wednesdays posting editorials and reviews. We're in a bit of a dry spell as the comics are on hold, but you never know what I might cook up in the meantime. Yeah. True, uh-huh. true, true, true. Probably character analysts, uh, analytics analyst and probably what um stuff that he always do i i've, I've always forget the naming thing that you do when the the ar- archetypes yeah archetypes yeah th- those are always fun have you done all of them no no i know me yeah see there's <laughs> that there too so just check it out when it's available yay and tarot <laughs> where can the good people find you well, the good people can find me on Facebook, even at Twitter or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or they can just do a Google search and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page and Kofi page, also under the name Torterra1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And switch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on planetlife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself, Like, Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vaquil. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Hope this Halloween is a scream. <laughs> Uniquely timed ill sound effect. <laughs> oh, I got nothing to say after that except bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, we, we, we. <laughs> And with that, we finished the recording. Yay. Oh, man. <laughs> Yay, indeed. I can't wait to try out what we're going to do next week. It should be fun. Should be very exciting. Yep, something new. All we need is the informa- the go-ahead from Babscon and the key to where we can stream. Oh, no. Yes. Silver spoiled it. <laughs> <laughs> but you were talking to, you were talking to Babscon. Yeah, but I didn't say where yeah, and he- what. But- yeah, he didn't mention where we were doing it. <laughs> Don't you think you should? Well, like, well, you can edit that out. No, no post. problem, man. Like, nobody really catches this last part out. <laughs> uh, it's people. F- it's for the people who are dedicated to the very end. So yeah, we are going. Well, we were going. For, we stream. Oh, if it did happen, we stream on. Okay, now I don't. Now I don't know what we're doing. Yeah, what are I, we doing? <laughs> see, I, I have to remind people that this is the past tense because when. This comes out. We already did the uh, review on BabsCon. See, this. But then I can't spoil it because it's already happened! Are you alright? This is a long outro. <laughs> Wait, bye bye.